Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, fellow Ambazonians. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure having you uh, with me on the set of uh, The War Zone right here on ABS TV. Uh, we are starting about an hour late, an hour late uh, due to some technical hitches. But uh, here we are. Here we are. We are right here uh, with the stories uh, we have outlined for you today, uh, uh, Friday. April the 12th, 2024. Uh, I will be joined by uh, three comrades uh, with whom we are going to break down the various stories, uh, uh, our revolutionary stories that we've prepared for you today. Of course, uh, a lot has happened and I wasn't able to come to you last week uh, for health uh, reasons. I wasn't feeling very well and that is why you didn't see me last week. But I'm here today, thank God, uh, my health is restored. Uh, so, uh, without uh, much ado, uh, let's see what we have today. But before I do that, I just want to take a moment to to salute our brave warriors who continue to stand strong and to defend our territory and uh, to uh, advise those who, uh, for some reason, are not very much doing the right thing to emulate the example of those who are uh, standing strong courageous, brave, disciplined, and defending our people and not molesting our people. We say uh, kudos to you and uh, continue to do the right thing and uh, maybe the others will learn from you. Uh, so uh, having said that, um, and, and let me take this moment to send a special uh, salutation to the Bui uh, Unity Warriors who continue to uh, demonstrate how restoration fighters ought to to be disciplined and focused and to stand for the interests of the people and the people only. Uh, I want to take this moment to really send my greetings and congratulations and a message of uh, rec recognition to Adebui Unity Warriors. Uh, job well done. Now, um, let us see what we have in store for you today. Um, uh, we have a few stories. Uh, we have seen some enablers expressing frustration at the very people they have been aiding. Um, we have seen, uh, uh, is it a Nasiri Clovis, the famous enabler? And uh, Jumeir Franklin, for qu quite some time we haven't heard from him, but we had a, a video from Jumeir Franklin recently lamenting and saying that he wants to be able to visit his village. We are going to go uh, take a look at that. Um, we also saw some colonial administrators shamelessly trying to encourage mothers to turn against their own children in Amazonia and to turn them in. I wonder if uh, he would do the same to his own child, uh, turn his own child into an enemy to be slaughtered. Uh, we're going to take a look at that as well. Um, uh, this issue of uh, liberation tax, um, this is something that has uh, fueled uh, the discussions in our various forums, and uh, we are going to take a look at that. Who is responsible for it? How is it conducted? Is it the right thing to do? Is it being done right? What is being done with the funds that are raised from this uh, activity, which I call here illegal? Uh, we are going to take a look at that. And um, uh, we are also going to look at um, uh, the behavior or the, 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 the recognition of or, or the position that beer holds in La Republic of Cameroon. How do they regard beer? They, they almost regard beer as, um, as gold, more valuable than some uh, things that ought to be more valuable than beer. So we're going to see some images of how La Republic citizens treat beer and you will just be shocked. Um, so again, the interim government's position with regards to this so-called liberation tax. So uh, without wasting much time, let me bring in my panel. Uh, Dr. Nguambe is supposed to be joining me, Chairman Patrick, and of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, very active and uh, indefatigable uh, Comrade uh, Sama Thomas will be here uh, so that we can uh, break down the stories. And of course, we will not forget what is happening to the people of Guzan for quite some time. 
they have been subjected to some of the most untold uh, misery and torture and killings. Some of the most gruesome killings have taken place in Guzan. We are going to take a look at what is happening in Guzan. So a, a lot to, 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 to dig into. So let's not waste time. Uh, Dr. Ngwambe, Chairman Patrick Nisama, if you are there, please, uh, let me see you. Uh, Neil Sama, yeah, Dr. Ngwambe, Chairman Patrick, please come in. Okay, okay I see Neil Sama here. Um, yeah, come on, uh, Mike, I'm here. Chairman, all right, Chairman Patrick is there. And Dr. Ngwambe, are you there yourself? Okay, the panel yeah, is full. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's... Go yeah, ahead, just go a ahead. quick greeting. Yeah, just a quick greetings to our fellow Ambazonians and our liberation uh, soldiers, our liberation heroes who are doing the right thing. And I also want to greet my fellow panelists, uh, Nisama Achoe Salut, Honorable Chairman, I greet you. All right, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you are keeping the salutations very brief because uh, we are already late and we have a lot to, to chew on. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, uh, the first story I would like for us to take a bite at would be uh, this uh, issue of um, uh, lockdowns, lockdowns that have been, I would say, indiscriminately called by some groups on the ground. And they are becoming um, an impediment to the functioning of uh, or normal life uh, to our people. And um, especially notorious uh, of these uh, people who are calling for lockdowns has been the ADF. Um, uh, we have seen it in Guzang, most especially, where uh, we will see some pictures of the Guzang market where uh, the citizens of, of uh, Guzang can no longer go to the market to sell their produce. And we can see the produce rotting away uh, food crops just perishing away while the market is locked down. And you will notice that even as this is going on, um, the, the same people are being, pay, are being asked to pay a liberation tax. And, I'm, and the question is this, and I would like for you people to chime in and tell us, how can you expect people whom you have deprived from selling their produce you are expecting the same people to then have money to pay you a liberation tax. So, uh, and I would like uh, Chairman Patrick, who happens to be from the area, to go to take a dig at this first and explain to us uh, the rationale. Who is responsible for this? And if he knows the rationale by, behind this uh, rather ill thought policy that is being implemented in Guzan, and uh, if uh there is any net benefit to the struggle for this uh behavior chairman patrick please go ahead well thank you so much uh, comrade mike i just want to say it is really unfortunate that this is happening in momo and as you know the only source of income in that community in momo county is agricultural produce and I'm still trying to understand how ADF chose to lay hands on the people of Mogamo and they are terrorizing these same people. When we as Momo children got together and decided to work as a team, a, a group of people came out of Mogamo and they were working all this in collaboration with the, the so-called Sako guy. And the mission in Mogamo was to make Mogamo another county. But unfortunately, they have seen the results of their actions. But I will tell you, this message is for the Momo children. If you are a son and daughter of Momo, you know anybody trying to fraternize with the ADF. You know, I talked to Jomba Akuro, um, Comrade Sikor, and all these people. We have to reflect on this. The people are going through hell. But the only bad thing is ADF has focused only on Mogamo and they know why they focus on Mogamo. But on the other hand, we the Momo children we are determined 
our people are not going to go through this any longer. Look at the amount of crops. This is somebody's maybe capital for the whole year that is being destroyed. ADF decided they are going to block the roads to say nobody from that community. I'm, I still try to understand when La Republic killed your military, your own fighter, you block the roads for your own people. Is this not counterproductive? What did the people do? Did the people kill your fighter? You are doing something to your own people without regard of what this is going to cause the revolution as a whole. But unfortunately, the people of Mogamo stood up and they are not, the Momo is going to work with them to see that ADF doesn't have any room to operate in that community. Comrade Ayab, Ayaba should understand that the Ambazonian revolution was not for our people to go through what they are going through because ADF is making the bad policies. We are looking at we are looking at what is going on there and we weep because we had a good intention, but Ayaba and his gang decided they were going to make it a, a war against our own people. And I don't know how they expect the people to pay the taxes that they're expecting people to pay. Look at, this is all they have. Their crops are being destroyed, mm -hmm. but they are expecting them to come pay money for their liberation. Yeah, uh, uh, Chair Chairman Patrick, uh, Chairman Patrick, talking about uh, these, um, the crops being destroyed, and the reason they are giving for this is that they are trying to mourn someone who is there, uh, uh, and, and especially someone who did not, was not doing anything to uplift the people, someone who did not serve the people well. Regardless of that, let's assume that he was a good fighter. Uh, and I would like Dr. Mugambe to come in here. Uh, let's assume that this person was a good fighter. We know he wasn't. Uh, is this the proper way to mourn a fallen fighter? Is this the proper way for uh, a people to mourn someone who served them well by causing more pain on the same people that person was supposedly fighting to, to defend? Is, is this the proper way to go about it? Because we have seen this thing is becoming almost contagious. And, and uh, by the way, I, I'm glad to announce here that the lockdown that was uh, recently announced for Barfoot has been called off. And that is how uh, a fighting force ought to listen to the people. When the people say no, this decision you have taken is wrong. They are, they, they are supposed to listen. And I believe that the Barfoot community raised concerns. This interim government raised concerns. We, we, we sent flyers out to the contrary on this. And I hope that, um, I hope that uh, this, this uh, lockdown in Barfoot has been called off will stand. So uh, I, I seems Chairman Patrick wants to say something again. Chairman Patrick, if you want to say something, go ahead before Dr. Ngwambe comes in. Is Chairman Patrick there? Uh, I hope I'm not frozen. No, 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 you're fine. Tamak, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Uh, Chairman, okay, then you go ahead. I don't know if Chairman Patrick probably dropped off a little bit. Uh, Dr. Ngwambe, go ahead. Yeah, um, first, uh, Tom, Mike, thank you for giving me the floor to speak. And uh, before I get going, I really want to, I know our brother, uh, Paolaji, he had a complicated um, history in this uh, liberation struggle. So we do want to recognize him for the good moments, the great moments he had in service for our liberation, for our freedom. And we want to, you know, extend him and his family and all uh, the liberation forces in Bafut. We want to say, uh, rest in peace to our brother, General Alaji. You know, uh, we, we thank him for his service in, in, in the past. And, you know, we, we pray for him. But with that being said, this is your question about um, when a, a liberation fighter falls on the battlefield, especially the, the heroic ones, the valiant ones. Mm -hmm. Do you lock down your people because uh, a, a, a well-renowned fighter, a loved fighter was killed on the battlefield? And the answer to that is no. It, and not even just a, 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 a simple no, it's a big no. Gang, 
<laughs> you understand that? Mm -hmm. When you look mm -hmm. at, let's look at what's going on in, our, in the world today. Those of you who've been paying attention to the news, Israel recently killed some Iranian um, top commanders who were meeting with, I think with Hezbollah figures or something like that in Syria, in the consulate grounds of Syria at that. And technically the way the diplomatic world works and uh, the way it works in the world, you're not supposed to attack diplomatic grounds, but mm -hmm. the Israelis took advantage of these people meeting there and they killed these top commanders of Iran. I know I asked this question a couple of weeks ago. Do you think that Iran is successful because their commanders were killed? No. Do you think they're going to block their people from being able to trade, to be able to go to the market just because their commanders were killed by Israel? The answer is no. What Iran is going to do is that they're going to identify targets, Israeli targets, and they're going to hit those targets. What Iran is going to do is they're going to set a day of memorial, a memorial day. They're going to set a, 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 a holiday, a public holiday for their commanders, their generals, their heroes when they are killed on the battle. That's the correct response to this type of stuff. You hit back at the enemy and you create a memorial service or a public holiday for your commanders. So the best advice that I would be giving to any liberation movement who has forces on the ground or any fighters on the ground who have uh, who have lost a commander is that you have to celebrate the life of uh, of your our fallen heroes. Look at what um, Ambazonians and the Libya Alem people did when uh, our brother Field Marshal the King passed away. He was celebrated in two in two countries, as a matter of fact, celebrated yes. here in the U.S. and then also celebrated in Canada. That is the correct thing to do. And then you retaliate against those who led to the loss of life of Field Marshal, and that's why you saw those who facilitated Field Marshal's death those people were brought down that's what you mm -hmm. do when a liberation fighter a commander a top general is killed on the battlefield you have to retaliate and then you also celebrate that person's life so for general alaji as we're thanking him for his service he passed away on the battlefield he was killed by our public to come on the battlefield celebrate his life responsibly not carelessly when you talk to me you celebrate your life where you go shock mimbo so they you you drunk then la public enter them be able to take you. No, that's not what we mean. You celebrate General Alaji's passing responsibly. Don't lock down the people. If not, because at the end of the day, you don't want to do things that is going to turn the population against the liberation struggle. Against you. Look at what we're talking about. You. People have gone to the farm. They've, uh, uh, they've been growing their produce. They're trying to sell their produce so they, they can be able to have something to eat. Why do you want to lock them down and then they start to perceive you as a negative force in that space? No. You want the people of Ambazonia and your community to always see you as the liberation soldiers that you are. You want the people in your community to always see that you are on their side. So avoid at all costs those things that's going to make the people in your community think that you are instead the enemy. So that's why we in the interim government in particular do not support any lockdown of our population because of a, a liberation soldier has died on the battlefield. That's not the wrong way. Celebrate his life retaliate against the enemy that is the way to go Th thank you thank you for, for elaborating that answer and making it very clear the distinction there uh dr Ngwambe. and, and when, we, when we look at what uh, uh just happened in bafu and again uh, we cannot thank uh, the bafu servant qatar enough for listening to the voices of reason and understanding that the decision they had made previously probably out of the pain of losing uh, their leader uh, was not the best and they have listened to the voices of reason and they have corrected their action that is what a responsible force uh, does uh, and listens to the people to do what is right by the people uh, so mm -hmm. uh, again i think the best thing that uh, the Bafu servant kata can do is take some time to plan their revenge against those who took down general Alaji. yes plan take your time to plan to pick a time of your own choosing to send a message to the Republic and to make them understand that uh, and the public to understand that a largest death, death has been avenged. And so, uh, Anir Sama, I would like for you to come in here and um, looking at what uh, is going on here, especially with reference to Guzan, where 
Uh, the ADF has persistently insisted on doing the wrong thing, despite the fact that several persons of high repute have reached out to them, trying to advise them and to talk to them to see reason to stop what they are doing. But they have been so stone-hearted. They seem to have just no remorse. They have no concern. They have no they have no feelings for the suffering of the people of Goza because we have seen all of the produce that is rotting away in the markets. The roads are blocked. And then you turn around and you are taxing the same people. Uh, uh, Nisama, um, I know you have interacted with uh, some of um, uh, the elements within the ADF before, and you have tried to talk to them yourself and to bring them to reason. And finally, you have given up that these people cannot be changed. So my question to you this summer is this, what is the way forward with regards to uh, the ADF? I know the people are rising up and rightly so, rightly so. This is the right thing to do. The people need to rise up and chase those who are causing the misery, especially when they are not doing anything against those who are actually causing death and pain to the people. I mean, I'm talking about La Republic to come around, who are the cause of this conflict in the first place. Like the ADF is not fighting against this, against them. So, uh, Honorable Samar Thomas, I want you to tell us what is the way forward for the people of Guza and Mogamo and Momo as a whole, as far as the ADF is concerned. Uh, can you check your audio again, uh, Samar? Ch check your audio. I still cannot hear you. I still cannot hear you. I can see you though, but I cannot hear you. Uh, I, th this, I can see you, but I can't hear you. Um, uh, try one more time. If it doesn't work, you may need to lock off and lock back on. And um, in the meantime, I may have to allow, uh, I don't know if Chairman Patrick is back. Is, is Chairman Patrick back? I think he dropped off for some reason. I don't know if he came back. Chairman Patrick, are you here? If not, uh, Dr. Ngombe, I, I don't know if you want to take a bite at this again. Uh, what do you think is a way forward for the people of Momo as a whole uh, with regards to their relationship with the ADF that has been nothing but has been responsible for pain and suffering and nothing else in that community. Uh, and uh, part of well, Mesam, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, the unfortunate thing that is there is that you have to be standing with your people and for your people. You, you Your people mm -hmm. cannot see you as the enemy because this liberation struggle, this liberation fight, this fight for freedom is for the people and by the people. So when you begin to do those things that is actually pitting the, the, the people against you and against the liberation struggle, it is but normal that the people who initiated the liberation struggle, the people who this liberation struggle is for, they end, they're going to end up having to clean the system because at the end of the day, the power belongs to the people. And that's essentially what we're seeing in in, in um, Mogamo and Guzang in particular. Uh, unfortunately, the um, egg of CADF fighters, they it seems as if they've been given a, a, a kind of false doctrine that is not really needed at this particular at this particular time. Um, if, if, if You know, most people always talk about how when the, at the time the liberation struggle, it started, the people were giving to the liberation struggle willingly. Uh, we've been made aware of um, the different ways churches, uh, the local population was doing their things to make sure that they supported the fight. The fighters need in Nguzang in particular, Momo in particular, if you all have run afoul of the population where they're not contributing willingly to you the way they used to do in the past, that means they will not give a check sense, when I give a retrace, when I have steps, and figure out where to be go wrong. And when, when I realize, say, the thing where be go wrong, be be not say, when I start to do the very thing for the population, where La Republic be to do for the population, that thing that I say, 
you go make roadblock for road, you collect money from people, you know, ask people them, you tax them, wait, they know they even see which that tax they really do. When you realize that I think it'd be make a made the people don't start turn away from that and it will not be the harass the population, you know, arbitrary the, the arrest, also known as kidnapping, because that's the politically correct way to call that, and ransom taking and all things. You, if you retrace your steps and you know say so you don't do that thing then, you get for a stop. Apologize to the population. As a matter of fact, you even start for try for find way for make restitution for the population. Even when yes. say you get for the the buy bag rice go gear for people the way you know see they don't harm them if you the fear for go see that people then directly because maybe some they go call like public or not maybe, maybe you leave that bag of rice somewhere and say nah i give this then you come on go you you understand no and maybe leave a note mm -hmm. saying my apologies you, you go to another place uh, um you give other gifts and you make public apologies to the population and then not only apologizing because you know if you apologize but if you continue for to do that very thing that means say that apology would be meaningless but you it, apologize be meaningless. Be meaningless. Yes. you understand no you apologize yes. and then you change yeah chairman patrick i see you don't hit that but yeah chairman patrick <laughs> i i see you are you are back i see you are back uh yes uh, we are talking about this thing about uh, again about mogamo and uh, uh, let me let me relate it to this issue of of um the so-called liberation tax because these, these things are just uh, they're they are just together uh, and before i do that i think comrade sikot gave me a, a message to send out here to the people of guzan especially that given the fact that the two notorious uh, characters who had been uh, spearheading this so-called lockdown and liberation tax thing in 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 that area that they were taken down and is calling on the people of Mogamo and, and, and uh, Guzang, to be specific, to come out and open their markets. I think uh, yesterday was a Guzang market. Uh, and he called on the people to come out and open their stores. A few people came out uh, uh, and they were able to open the stores. And, uh, and uh, I think most of them gave away some free, free stuff to those who came. But we hope that the next Guzan market will be fully operational. Let them come out, open their stores, and do their business. Because at this point, uh, those notorious boys are now afraid to come around because they know that the population is alert. And you cannot do such a thing to an alert and determined population and succeed. Because you may, you may, you may have done it a few times and succeeded. But if the people are determined that you will not do it anymore, you will not do it. So the people of Guzan should rise up. They have risen up already. Let them carry on with their normal activities and not be afraid of these guys who are mostly hiding way in the jungle at this point. Let them carry on with their lives. Forget about these criminals. Their eyes watching. There are people watching out for them now. If they come around, they will be tracked. And, and going forward, I think we have to align, give to the population uh how they are going to behave in order to make sure that these criminals are dealt with as as they deserve uh, going forward but let me give the place to uh i don't know if uh, uh honorable Samar thomas is back and then chairman patrick too then we can uh chairman patrick if you are there carry on then we'll see if uh <coughs> honorable Samar thomas is back yeah all right, thank you, Comrade uh, Mike. I think um, that message is. Very uh, and clear. Chairman Patrick, if you if you have a special message for the people of Guzan, please, uh, this is a moment to give it. Yes, actually, this is uh, that is the direction I was about to go. This mm -hmm. is for the whole of Momo and Guzan specifically. I want to tell you guys, we have a single Amazonian structure, a single Amazonian struggle individuals cannot get up and give you orders because we have a channel that we convey messages to you if somebody come up with a lockdown you have to be making those calls to your people within the interim government asking them questions if this is the right thing don't be scared we have too many rooks who are running within the momo axis especially mogamo we are going to tell you whenever there is anything coming up and if any of these rogues come out telling you this is what they want to do or this is 
what the uh, lockdown is going to look like. You will get the right information from this channel and other reputable Amazonian structures that will give you the right information. These channels are for the people. The people are the first line of defense. It's not the gun that you are carrying. Your people will guide you. Your interim government will guide you on what is supposed to happen. If you hear these guys running down the street and telling you there is a lockdown, we are going to tell you, don't listen to them. They might have guns, and these guns are not going to help them when the moment comes because you all own the land. This liberation struggle is for the people, not for individuals. And ADF doesn't give any command in Momo. If ADF was a reputable fighting force, they will coordinate the activities with the Momo leadership. And they will talk to the Momo leadership whenever they are about to carry on any action. But since they have taken it to terrorize the people, and the question you have to ask those who are collecting the taxes, what are they doing with the money? Where are they fighting? If I can remember right, Efang went to Pinyin and collected so many cows. He sold some of those cows and some of them, they were cooking them behind there and nobody knows what they did with those people's cows. Is mm -hmm. that productive to the revolution of Amazonia? So again, we will give you the right information for whatever is supposed to be done whenever anything is going on in Amazonia. So nobody gives you orders. The Amazonian leadership and the Momo leadership will convey this information to you within the Momo area. And this revolution is not just for the Momo, it's for Amazonia. And anything that happens, we go beyond Momo and look at Amazonia as a whole. So thank you. Well, thank you, Chairman Patrick. Uh, uh, yes, uh, let's let's uh, let's uh, drive down on this uh, issue of uh, the taxation again. And I hope uh, uh, summer is back. Uh, the, 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 there are a few things I want us to note about this uh, so-called taxation. First of all, it is carried out by criminals. Let's let's make it very clear. This thing called uh, liberation tax is carried out by criminals. Let's let's spell it out as it should be spelled out. It is carried out by criminals. It is not regulated. It is not regulated. There's nothing that says, okay, if you are earning this much, this is how much you pay. They simply say, men this, women this. All men don't earn the same amount. All men don't earn the same amount. You don't just tax people uh, an even amount just because they are men or women. It is not regulated. And secondly, it, there's no account. I mean, thirdly, there's no accountability as to what is done with the money that is collected. There's no accountability. So it, it, that's the, that's the third thing that is wrong with it. Uh, the wrong people are targeted for taxation. The people that ought to be uh, 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 taxed are not being taxed, and they, our poor miserable people, people it, even a lot of public citizens in our territory, are not being taxed. And then you turn around and you're taxing the very people you say you are fighting to liberate. That is wrong. And we are this interim government is against it. It's against it. It is wrong. Uh, it is not uniformly applied. It is only applied to a few very tiny sections of Ambazonia. So are you now saying that only those sections will pay for the liberation of Ambazonia? What about the areas that are not paying, that are not paying any tax? Huh? Or, or any taxes? So uh, uh, Guzan and maybe a few areas in uh, 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 here is now creeping in some uh, uh, areas of Mezam. So only these tiny areas will pay for the liberation of Ambazonia. That is wrong. That's one thing that is wrong, uh, uh, wrong there too. So uh, what should we do? I think personally, these criminals should be identified that when they come into a community, people should come out, raise an alarm, track them down, and decommission them. Decommission these people. These are criminals, riffraffs who are just taking advantage of the people. They are not liberation fighters. They don't engage the enemy. They instead cause uh, more, more, more pain on our people. It is wrong, and it should be condemned at the highest level. So I don't know if this summer is back. Um, I, I haven't seen him yet. 
Need some are you there? He's probably not back. Uh, Dr. Ngwambe, I don't know. It, 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 uh, isn't, this, isn't, isn't this true, what I've, I've said here uh, about uh, the wrongs of this so-called liberation tax, where people just go out, they pick and choose the very weak, weak uh, targets in our society, and we cause them more pain. And especially in the case of Guzan, where they have been pre prevented from going to the market to sell, where they are supposed to generate the income that they expect to, to pay the to be used for the taxes. I mean, uh, it's like you're trying to build a house and um, you are making mud for your foundation. How stupid is that? Again, that's why I keep I keep going back to this issue that you're liberating people. We are liberating our people from certain injustices. And then a certain set of rogue people amongst us begins to use the same bad practices of our occupiers against our people and then they think that makes sense that's that's one of the things i don't i don't really understand about some people and the way that they they rationalize the decisions that they're making in this liberation struggle right now you cannot be taxing the people of uh, of guzang when you know that part of why we are in this struggle is because of some of the malpractices of La Republic du Cameroon. You cannot be taxing mm -hmm. poor people, the poor people that you're trying to liberate. As a matter of fact, um, that, that Mike, you, you've seen the videos that, um, what is this television station event? What is it? Uh, anyway, the, the, the YouTube station that's uh, uh, hosted by our brother, Augustine Ambe, where he went back in. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's talking about um, uh, Muna, uh, PM Muna and uh, Funchan, mm -hmm. they were talking. And inside that video, we see the defense uh, how can I call him? The defense chair. Let me call him the defense chair for AG of CADF. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Sheikh she Kavi. I think that's his name, right? Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. spoke. He spoke in that thing. He was looking quite young in those days, and he said that those who are in, those of us who are in privileged nations, are responsible for financing the liberation of our people back home. That's what he mm -hmm. said back then in 19, I think that video was what, 1995 or was it 2005 something or 2002, something like that. So mm -hmm, it, it, mm -hmm. it amazed me that he is fully aware that is you're not supposed to tax the people you are, you are freeing on the ground. It's those who have been able to get to the free world who want freedom, who are supposed to go into our pockets willingly and financial liberation struggle. How did he go from that mindset to this mindset now that he is encouraging liberation fighters under his command to be taking from the poor to finance liberation activities that most people people are not even aware of what those liberation activities I, are. I think I think it, I think uh, Dr. Robert, I think it just has to do with the priorities of their organization I think the the, uh, the ADF has long left the struggle for the liberation of southern Cameroons and Brazilian. they have long abandoned the struggle they are not in this struggle for the right reasons anymore. Because when you when you choose to make a decision, when you are making a decision as a movement, there have to be a rationale for the decisions you are making. And what I mean, when if someone were to ask them, what is the net benefit of what they are doing to the struggle? What are they going to say? When you collect the money, you allow the aggressor to move into the territory freely and molest the people then you come back you come in after the the aggressor has left to molest the same people again and extort from them and then you are not engaging the, the enemy in any way so I, I just want to i would like to ask anybody from the adf to explain the the, the thinking that goes behind these decisions that they make huh? what, what 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 is the rationale for the, these things that they do What's the, end, what's the end goal? You see, it, it just does not make any sense. And that is why I, as 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 well as many Ambazinians, now believe that the ADF has long abandoned the fight for the liberation of Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. Look at their so-called late uh, Efang, who died without ever knowing, with ever, we, we never knew, uh, learned of him engaging the enemy anywhere but we know of him killing many of our brave generals he was responsible for ki killing ivor he was responsible for killing charter 
He is suspected for killing Commando and other generals, Bebe, who was buried alive, and many other innocent citizens who were neutralized by Efang. But you cannot name one La Republic agent who was taken down by Efang. But then when he dies, you come around and you are molesting the people and, and uh, subjecting them to an unnecessary lockdown because of the death of someone who whose death actually was received with, with, with uh, much fanfare in that community because of what he did when he was alive. So, uh, Chairman Patrick, uh, not to belabor this point, uh, I think um, I I'll give you the chance to make one more statement, then we'll move, move on to the next topic. <clears throat> yes, uh, Comrade Mike, I just want to also add here, I'm talking here as somebody that has supported the revolution from the onset. I don't just support by talking, I support financially. And if you talk to the uh, fighters in my area, they know what I've done for them and other areas to sustain the revolution. But I'm so disappointed because one day I'm going to stand and ask somebody like Mr. Ayaba or whatever he calls him, call himself to show any receipt of how much he has contributed for this revolution. I'm saying this because my parents have been forced to pay this liberation tax. I have the receipts with me that were sent to me. And I sit there and ask myself, I have done everything. I'm doing everything to push the revolution forward. But you go to harass my parents who, don't, who are jobless, who don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. and they have for them to pay liberation tax so it is one of those things that you look at it and say some of these our guys have lost their conscience if you take any money i'll be happy if you take that liberation tax and you are making a dent in this revolution but the more you are taking this money one thing i will say i at one point i knew uh, the guy capo daniel's little brother who was there in Bamenda. He was the one collecting most of this money. And every time he collected the money, he would travel to Nigeria to ship money out to them in wherever they are. So some of this, their madness that is going on is because the money is not coming as they expected. And this liberation tax, somebody's taking it and sharing it with these jobless guys who are in Europe or wherever they are trying to think they are going to use the Ambazonia revolution to enrich themselves. But unfortunately, I would tell them no revolution has ever ended without it, without the people getting what they want. La Republic can push it for five years, 10 years, 15 years. We are going to get what we want. But to the people of Momo and some areas of Mezam, don't pay a dime. We do not want any fighter to die. But if anybody comes ask you for money, you have the right to call the right people to take them out because they are not for the revolution. They are just scammers trying to steal from you. The people are struggling. They don't even have enough to eat. They, lockdown is killing them. They don't even have a way to go to their farms, but you are expecting them to pay. How do they do it? The diaspora has come up to help pay for this revolution, not the people on the ground. Yes, and when you look at someone like Capo uh, Daniel, who is now being vilified by the ADF, they are now at each other's throat. But these are people who are pretty much doing the same thing in favor of La Republic to come around. What Capo Daniel is doing is helping La Republic. What ADF is doing is helping La Republic. And then they are there trying to criticize each other, they're trying to outdo each other. I believe that I, I strongly believe that the fall out between Kapo and Ayaba and his team stems from money that was not properly distributed. It has to do with money, it has nothing substantive to do with a real uh, a, a real difference in ideology. They share pretty much the same ideology. Their, 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 their fallout stems from money that they probably received from La Republic and it was not uh, properly shared. And that is why they are now at each other's throat. But they will not come out and say it, though. They will not come out and say it. 
Now, with regards to what our population uh, should do, I think at this point, our population should organize themselves and have a, me a, a means of communication where when they see one of these criminals coming around to say collect taxes, they should sound that alarm and everybody should come out and try to round up these criminals and and deal with them like you're dealing with any armed robber. That is that is where our our citizens ought to behave now. When any of these criminals come around, you should agree on but whether it's a whistle or it's kind of beating of pots and pans and everybody comes out, you get them and you treat them as they should be treated. Deal with them like you deal with any any any, any any armed robber and this nonsense will stop we cannot allow our people to continue to go on uh, go through this nonsense from the adf when they are not engaging the enemy now uh talking about that there, there's an, a story which came out where you have these colonial administrators i think they went out again it was somewhere again in momo i i, I think we have some videos of them if we can at least show even the pictures where they were standing there trying to encourage our poor fathers and mothers to turn their own very children over to them as if they would treat them well because those they took to this their so-called ddr center are still languishing there in miserable conditions as prisoners they, nothing has been done to improve their lives but, they, but they, they, they expect our poor mothers and fathers to continue to send their children to them and uh, when you look at why i even wanted to talk about this it was it is good to look at the images because you look at these colonial administrators they are standing there yes this is one of them look at look at him look at him then look at the population i i i wish we could see the image of the population look at this man who who cannot even button his jacket as how swollen the stomach is and then look at the poor people standing there looking miserable and the reason he is encouraging this population to turn over their children over to them is so that he can show these children as trophies so that he can they can give him more money to continue to feed fat look at them all of them standing there look fresh because they are eating well they are there just to protect what they are getting from La Republic. And they are deceiving the population that is miserable. The only reason there is this conflict is because of the misery that the people have been suffering for so long. And, and the torture and the exploitation. Uh, uh, Dr. Mkwabe, um, yeah, you look, you look at this. I, I think the, the picture, the picture there says it all. I don't even have to say much. Look at the people then look at colonial administrators that is why they are there to defend their lifestyle look at these people look at the misery look at their faces and you are telling them to continue to subject themselves to you so that you are the only one who should be enjoying while they are suffering he cannot even button his jacket dr Mwabe. well ultimately this is this is what i'll tell our population back home Right, and it kind of goes in line with this issue about um, um, certain things that go on. Right, all everyone back home knows that when a child misbehaves in the home, you spank that child in the home and you caution that child in the home. And I will even go on further to say that if that child misbehaves in the market, you spank that child in the market to send a message. You, as the parent, or even as a community, you all can spank that child in the presence of the community so that the community knows that they're going to discipline that child and you're not going to hand that child over to the authorities that is a big no no the community find a way to discipline you know your your um, those who misbehave now with regards to our brothers and sisters who are fighting to liberate our population who are fighting to liberate all of us from the enslavement of la republic du cameroon the population knows better than to hand true liberation fighters over to these these thugs right these people that you see on the screen because my fellow ambazonians remember when we go out into the streets to protest for our rights 
You know what La Republic do Cameroon does? They shoot us down, right? They shoot us down. Instead of finding a way to, they lock, not even that they shoot us down, they lock us up. They, you know, they, they do all kinds of uh, mischief against us. Instead of trying to find a way to, to, to expand the freedoms uh, of the society, expand prosperity to the society, they instead met hardship on us. That's why we're fighting. So when you see these guys, they come here and they're, they're talking all their grammar, they're dressed in their fine suits, they're looking excessively fresh, they're looking as if they could afford to miss a couple of meals. Don't even bother to listen to them because they're not fighting for you. They do not have your interest at heart because of this, this guy in this suit on this screen and these colonial administrators behind him, these occupiers that are standing behind him, if they actually had the interest of Ambazonians at heart, they would have pressured dictator Bia to take all the negotiation processes that have been and uh, pre-talks, let me call them like that, because mm -hmm. we know this, the Swiss process was actually a process and the Canada uh, thing was a pre-talks. They would have, these administrators who are working for La Republic du Cameroon, they would force their dictatorship to take the peace process and pre-talk seriously so that we can find a just solution to the situation that we all are going through, right? But they're not doing that. They're instead coming and, and speaking to you all because they want to, instead of, you know, how will I call it, they, instead of tarring the road, they want to come and throw dirt on the road and say that's a tarred road. They want to give cosmetic solutions. We know that these uh, guys, uh, they're not going to do anything that is actually going to fix that is going to fix uh, things in the long run. Of course, of course, Dr. Wabe, Dr. Wabe, you know that uh, these people are here, they are not willing to give, give in on anything. They want everything to just remain the way it is. Uh, they just yep. want the status quo to remain as it is. They are not willing to give in. They are not even they don't, even our some of our gullible brothers who keep talking about uh, federation. Larry Mubin is not ready even for federation. They are not ready. So uh, 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 what I hear is they are just telling you just give up, just remain our slaves. That's what we want. Uh, and uh, Chairman Patrick, again going back to the ADF, this thing is happening in Momo, right? You will not see the ADF come out and attack these people. These people will go there, stand there with their swollen stomachs and hold their meeting with the population and leave. And not a single thing will happen to them. But then when these people are gone, the ADF will come back down and start molesting these very people who are standing here looking so miserable. What is happening? And that is what we, we are trying to condemn here. Uh, what do you have to say to this, uh, Chairman Patrick? Well, unfortunately, I would say the people are caught between a hard rock and a stone. And yep. I would say the people, not only in Momo, the people of Amazonia, they are, they in, in the first place, they had areas that they will run to because they know the restoration forces were go going to be there to protect them. But when it comes to these guys in Mogamo, the people will stay away from them. They will prefer to even talk to La Republic. But mm -hmm. to these administrators who are standing there, I feel so bad for them. They are just defending their livelihood. Mm -hmm. They think they are trying to coerce the people to fight against their own children. We had a similar situation in Jiqua recently where the colonial administrator went to the village market I was even calling my name that I live in South Africa. I should call the fighters in Jiqua to bring their weapons so that he can reward them and all that nonsense. But reward I would them. tell him he he is very lucky because but right now is tit for tat. Mm. I have made it very clear if anything happens in Jiqua, because he had promised that he's gonna be visiting our homes or uh, go after our families. I'm not, nobody's scared. Uh, there are 30, over 30,000 Ambazonians that have died because of this revolution. And we are willing to sacrifice as much as possible because we want to get Ambazonia a free country. So the administrator should keep trying, but unfortunately the people will not, the people will not hand over or they will not even leak the hideout of the real Amazonian fighters because they know 
these our people they know what they are fighting for if mm. the public thought that these people are with them they could have called for a referendum in Amazonia to resolve this when we saw the people of uh, America coming out on the street after the George Floyd the United States did not come out guns when you saw France the people the French people came out fighting hard because of the increase of uh, the age limit of uh, retirement and all that stuff people were on mm -hmm. the streets for weeks they did not come out with guns the government came out called the people and said what do you want let's talk that is how they saw but as dumb as the people of la republic are they think they are going to use guns if they were if any revolution or any war has ever solved a problem the united states would have solved the problems in afghanistan they would have yes. solved the problem in iraq but they ended up talking to these people or packing and leaving because you are not going to keep on fighting and killing people and expect their relatives to come sit one day and say oh let's just fraternize everything's okay so la republic to your your information is you need to reflect on what you are doing because we know in a few years in a few months some of these heavy stomach people standing there will not have a place to hide and some of them will not even have jobs because the republic will not be there for them they think yes because for right now the republic is there they are running around look at the people ruling the republic they should be ashamed to stand and even expect to talk to anybody look at their senate <laughs> look at their assembly we have living cops standing there ruling them. what future are they building for their own children yes so so, so um when you look at this uh, image here and the, the lies that these colonial administrators are telling uh, our people there. I want to remind our, our citizens that La Republic will never keep any promise they make to you. They have never kept any promise they have made to us for the last 60 years. When they tell you to stand here and wait for them, as soon as they start walking north, start walking south, because they are not coming back. Uh, you see, you, uh, and I would like for us to go to another video which uh, showed uh, Nasri Clovis and Franklin Jume lamenting. And Nasri Clovis was lamenting why? That the, 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 the colonial police in, in Meme has been harassing people and extorting from drivers and Okada riders and even seizing their bikes. And this is the same guy who ran to the DDR center. He is now the one decrying the very ass of the people he ran to, in, into whose hands he has put himself. He is crying now. And we have told, we have told these people that, look, if you believe anything like the public you, the Cameroon is telling you, you are a fool. Because we have seen and known them for the past 60 years. They are liars, manipulators, cheats, drunkards, and you uh, uh, thieves for that matter uh, uh, and you can name the rest so these people nasri clovis was crying there uh, 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 lamenting and says he doesn't care whether they do to him anything now when, when he is crying there i think it is more of the, the cries that uh, nasri clovis his tears he was shedding there mean a lot more than what he was saying He's probably lamenting his own very situation because he is not comfortable. He is not comfortable. The things he was promised, he has not, he was not given, he has not been given. That is why you saw someone like Nambere came, tried and ran away. Uh Nkoho Success came, tried and ran away. Uh, many of them have tried and run away. La, La Republic has no money to spend on people they cannot even trust because they know that if you can betray your own people, then they cannot trust you. They cannot trust you. Uh, Dr. Ngombe, uh, I mean, when you hear of the lamentations of these uh, uh, enablers, Franklin Jumel was crying that, oh, the government should do something to stop uh, this war, that there are some people within the government who don't want the war to end because they are profiting from it. So is it just, just now that this thing is occurring to them? 
and that he wants the war to end because he wants to go and visit his village. These are enablers, the regrets of the black legs indeed. They are regretting now. The ones in the DDR center, they are looking for ways to run away, but they are prisoners. There's no way for them to escape. This is the guy who is lamenting. He is now warning the same people that we told him about that do not, do not trust these people. But he went there. Now he's pointing his finger at them because of the things that they are doing to the population. Uh, Dr. Mugabe, what do you have to say about this? So, I mean, the, the only thing that I want to say to uh, my our brothers, right, of Amazonian descent, uh, Nasir Clovis and Franklin Jume, is that, look, my brother, didn't, we did not want to end up in this situation where we had to pick up guns to fight La Republic du Cameroon. I, I think you all need to appreciate that. The Ambazonian man, woman, and child, we believe that speaking the best English and using the best law and using the best history and talking about uh, uh, Resolution 1608 and uh, uh, we have boundaries here and there and the violation of the federal constitution. And we believed in all that big grammar. We thought that that was going to fix this problem. And it didn't work. We, we I mean, if we would have done things that continue to do things the peaceful way or continue to seek uh, 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 remedies that are done through the legal route, through using the justice system, through using the ballot box, through using constitutional law, through using Republican mechanisms, et cetera, et cetera, would have continued to do that if La Republic du Cameroon, the, the dictator Bia, the regime, the CPDM movement, Ahijo CNU, if these people were people of good faith, but French Cameroonese, they do not act in good faith. The government of dictator Bia do not act in good faith. And that's why we're in the situation where we're at. And that's why you all are even in the situation that you're in now where you even have to be speaking this way. Brother Nasir Clovis, you're talking like this. How are yeah, you, when what you're when talking, you talking, how is that really talking like that? Wherever he is, whether they say he has left the country to somewhere or not, you is still there. I mean, when, I want someone to just tell me, what is the future of those who are sitting in their so-called DDR centers now? Because they are not going to school. They are not being trained for any job. They are just sitting there. They are prisoners. So what lies ahead for them? When are they going to start having establishing their own families and moving uh, 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 moving on with their own lives? They are just sitting there. The lives of uh, this guy who used to be in Pingin, grandpa of Pingin or somebody, uh, and the others who who sub as soon as that guy went in, I've never heard of him again. I don't know where he is. I don't know what has become of him. Whether he's be even been killed, nobody knows. The, the thing that I want to understand from our brother Nasir Clovis is that the talking is good, expressing yourself is good, right? But what mechanisms has La Republic du Cameroon put in place that that talking is actually going to lead to a positive change so that you don't have to continue that talking? Nothing. It hasn't happened. So that's why I keep saying that we Ambazonians, we were forced into this situation. We, I mean, I mean, all we, all we, we like Dr. Taito, no, we like going to school and getting the education, uh -huh. and having uh -huh. that respect because you're educated and all those types of things like that. But unfortunately, having that education and having that respect, it hasn't resulted in, in tangible things in the Ambazonian and French Cameroon society that is benefiting the people. And that's why we've been mm -hmm. forced to go to war. First of all, Lamaroon declared war on us because we started speaking, we started using peaceful protests because we wanted a redress to the political climate that dictator B and his regime had created. They don't listen. So what do you want us to do? No. I mean, I, 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 I feel bad. I really feel bad for him in the sense that I know he, he had to do what he had to do in order to save his life. But the unfortunate thing is that all this talking that you're doing, you are still going to end up having to fight for your right to have a good country. And that's what Ambazonians are doing. And we owe no apologies to any enabler, or any La Republic of Cameroon apologist for what we are doing because we were forced into this situation. If Ahijo would have listened in those days, we would that where you, he was not even supposed to violate the 1972 constitution by doing yes. that stupid referendum yes. to get rid of the Federation. We would not be in this situation. If we would not be I here, we would, would not be here. Delegation that come by in good faith to establish a confederation. 
between Ambazonia or Southern Cameroons, the former British trustee of Southern Cameroons, now known as Ambazonia, and La Republic du Cameroon, we would not be in this situation. If all the peaceful things that the Foncha delegation, the Muna delegation, our brother, Dr. Munzu, and all the other people who are going to the United Nations to pursue peaceful means, if the activities of our brothers Edwin Gang and, and Fon Goji Dinka and all those who went to the court in Banjul and all those things, to get all the legal things that they were trying to do, if those things would have worked, we not would not be in this means. Unfortunately, you have uh, uh, Dr. Fight. Gwambe, as you are saying, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the 1961 constitution is not the only thing that was vi violated. Let's, let's, let's just look at the chronology of things that La Republic has promised and failed. After that, they came up with the 1972 United Republic, right? They, 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 they didn't even keep that one. As, as, washed, as washed down as that one was compared to what we had before, they did not even maintain that. Then, uh, then uh, when Povia finally dealt away single-handedly with even the United Republic and brought about uh, the Republic, they, in 19, I think it was 1994, 1996, somewhere around that, they promised a decentralization and that they will make the regions autonomous so that people will stop traveling to Yaoundé. And if they had even done that, yep. maybe we would not even be in this situation. If they had just create, made sure that the regions were autonomous to manage their own affairs, instead of making every, putting everything in Yaoundé, where every little thing you have to travel to Yaoundé are where the money is completely uh, mismanaged. Maybe we'll not even be in this thing. Even after that, uh, of recent, they had their so-called what grand debat or whatever. The very their own very resolutions they they adopted them were not respected. Bef at the start of this conflict, our brothers, the Tassans and the others, they sat down, gave conditions, which if those conditions were had been respected. We will not be in this situation. So they have, there are just numerous occasions where the Republic of Cameroon has promised something because they were promised, uh, the Tassan and the others were promised uh, that the uh, uh, Republic will go and look at the conditions that they had given and then come back and they will discuss the following day. And instead, they were bonded and, and thrown in prison. That is what happened. Their Gobalas and their Fontaines were, were bonded and put in prison. So these are people you cannot trust. Time and time again, they have demonstrated this. You cannot trust them. Now, uh, let, us, let us talk about something here. Because the priorities that people have for themselves can tell you where they are heading. I have a video here of a truck that was carrying beer. A truck that was carrying beer. And we don't know what happened. The truck was on fire. And when you observe the behavior of the La Republic of Cameroon citizens who came around vis-a-vis -vis the burning truck, what they prioritized in that situation, that tells you where that country is headed. I would like for us to watch the video before we make our commentary of that burning truck that was carrying here. That is it. And now let's take a moment to observe the people why the truck is burning. Let's see what the people are prioritizing. Yes. You see? Yeah, that's the big problem. You see? Is a burning truck. But see, see what they are focused on doing. See what they are focused on doing. There is nobody there ah, trying to save the ballot. burning truck. Nobody is trying to save the burning truck. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure you have observed it. Uh, uh, one day, uh, uh, Patrick. You have seen <laughs> La Republic and what they, they most value. Beer is like gold to them. Beer in La Republic de Cameroon is like gold. Can you evaluate the cost of that truck that is burning? I know. And how long it took for that truck to burn down to where it is? And 
how long it took for them to offload the drinks in that that way in that that must have been uh, that truck was probably full see how long and, and we look at the countenance these people seem like they, they look like they are doing something very patriotic they are very happy that they are doing something great uh, uh, they, they think they are doing something great but the value of these drinks in this truck is far less than the cost of this burning truck if you take all of the drinks in that truck it's, it's, I don't even think it's up to half of the value of that truck that is burning. There is nobody who, trying to put out a fire so the truck does not burn down. But they are trying to save that precious liquid. They are trying to save that precious liquid, that beer. That is the mentality of a lot of the Cameroon citizen. When whatever you do, at the end of the day, if you are able to hold a bottle of beer, life is sweet. Someone could be sitting uh, outside or in a bar and his legs may be in a pool of water, mud even. As long as he has a bottle of beer in his hands, you ask him, how is, how is life? He will say, la vie est belle. <laughs> he, will say, he will say, la vie est belle. But his legs are in a pool of of mud, eh? as long as it has that gold, that golden liquid called beer, that is, and that is why that that country is like uh, uh, they are addicted. Eh? They, they are addicts. A person leaves his house in the morning, goes to work. At the end of the day, he just wants to make sure that he can have a bottle of beer. Whatever thing earth happens whether the house is on fire uh, he doesn't care as long as there's a bottle of beer in his hands life is okay so uh, i just wanted us to see this and understand why you see Bobia knows this and he has known this for quite some time that's that's why he has opened all the bars he allows them to sell from from 6 a.m in the morning to till 6 a.m the following day the bars don't close there's an abundance of beer you are the people are just completely in a perpetual state state of drunkenness they cannot reason and that is why he is there at 92 years and he's still their president i want i want you to make your take on this Uh, Chairman um, Patrick, why, why don't you go first? <laughs> well, uh, Comrade Mike, um, I want to tell you, La Republic, this is something that the colonial master did evaluate. If you look at this Western world, they, when they want to colonize a territory, they look at what can make these ha people happy. That is exactly what they found in Cameroon in La Republic, they discover that these people, they like to consume alcohol. They, they, to them, they enjoy. There's one thing my father-in-law used to tell me, when you see somebody go out there, get drunk, fall through all the gutters and get home the next morning, you hear him get up and say, oh, I show Mimbo today. But forgetting <laughs> to know that that alcohol made him get all kind of wounds all over his body. <laughs> but that is alcohol showing him. But he said that I show Mimbo. So some of these things you look at it and you feel so bad because it, ignorant, ignorant yes. is killing the yes. people. Because yes. can you think about this? No, there are over 40 or 40 people standing there. No single person is trying to see how do we even get soil. If we don't have water, you can get soil and try to throw it on that car to suppress no, the No, no, everybody is so focused on the beer. Nobody is thinking about the burning truck. Yes. The liquid. That liquid is not even like one-tenth of the cost of that car. But mm -hmm. they are focusing on what they are going to drink. That is exactly yes. what we're talking about, La Republic, focusing on the present and not thinking about the future. Look at their, their leadership. 
Their leadership doesn't have any vision. They are focused on what can, we, how much money can we embezzle today? Uh, uh, and the, the reason, the reason is that those who are engaged in this activity know that at the end of the day, it's, it's as bad one as one. Beer. They will, they will have one, one bottle of beer. <laughs> They will have one because they were money at the end of the they, day, they call, they call and that is man. enough for them. To them, that is enough. They just want to have one bottle of beer out of, out of that. <laughs> if it, that is yeah. exactly you know, what you see in this Western world, they have restriction. They have certain aspect of who can drink and what time, and how much can you drink, because they know when you drink you are not productive. You, you can drink and you are able to go back to your office or to your job and do something productive for the economy. But in La Republic, they prefer people to go spend five minutes at work, spend two hours in the in the off license drinking, but they think they are being yeah, yeah, productive. Yeah, I, I, yes. and when it comes to that, the, the, the limitations as to when bars can open, you cannot expect people to drink beyond 10 o'clock 11 12 people are still drinking how are you supposed now to get up in the morning and go to work the, the next day and be productive especially where you have to maybe get behind the wheel and drive you are, you can you are not only putting your your life at risk you are putting the lives of others on the road at risk and that is why the government ought to regulate how late you can stay up in a bar but in that country ahijo did that but Pobia came and opened up everything and said, drink as much as you want, as late as you want. There's no regulation. They don't even control where you can open a bar. They can open a bar next to a school. It does not matter to them. You know, you know, that might, you know one of the interesting things about this, this, this palava, about Mimbo and how it manipulates and pacifies the population. Like, we're not, we're not too well, we're not there for, for, for U.S., you know, one of the complaints of African American intellectuals and and and, and people who are pro black is that yes why is it that the government of the U S it seems as if the local governments here they allow the opening of uh, liquor stores in predominantly you know low income black, neighborhoods yes black neighborhoods black mm -hmm. neighborhoods yeah black neighborhoods his, his Hispanic neighborhoods you know that's where it seems as if they make it so easy for these types of establishments to be present. And the complaint that the intellectuals from our community has always had is that this is a, their way to kind of pacify us and, and keep us from being able to take stock and reality of the things we need to do to fix our solution. Check our advertising team. Yeah, let's take it. Yeah, let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. Yes, uh, I think um, uh, we, we are taking a moment here. Uh, we are almost at the end of the show. Um, uh, with regards to that story, uh, that is like we are saying, that is, those are the priorities of a, a country like La Republic of Cameroon. Uh, so uh, 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 I would like to say here that um, I will give uh, my, my panelists uh, a minute each to run up and then I'll make my summary and uh, we, we will call it a day, but we will go back again and highlight the various topics we've talked about today. So um, uh, I will start with you, uh, Chairman Patrick. Unfortunately, we're not able to have uh, uh, Oliver Samathamas join us again, but uh, Chairman Patrick, why don't you just go ahead and uh, uh, make your closing remarks? And uh, I think uh, we've covered uh, all of the topics that we had outlined for this program today. Please go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Comrade Mike, and thank you, Honorable Dr. Nguambe. I just want to say this to the people of Momo again and the people of Amazonia, that we are fighting a just cause. We are fighting for our people. We are fighting for the future of this nation. There is no leader, there's no individual that will tell you to turn the gun against your own brother and you listen to them. Whenever you are out there, you should be the protector of the Ambazonia Restoration Fighters. You should be looking out for what is happening on the ground. We have, there's, there are no two ways. 
in the next few years, La Republic is about to crumble. It's going to crumble. And our mission here is to make sure we maintain a peaceful, loving environment for our people. The people on the ground, when that moment happened, you are going to get the directives. You are going to get instructions. How do we conduct ourselves? We have a clear example from Somaliland. When Somalia was going out of control, Somaliland was able to organize themselves and they have conducted themselves to the highest level where the country is flourishing, even though they do not have the international recognition, they are doing way better than most of the African countries. Let's focus. We have so many Amazonians that are well to do. They have the ability to create, the, to build an economy that is going to be better than no other in Africa. Let's focus and think when that moment comes, how are we going to conduct ourselves? If anybody, if you are an Amazonian Restoration Force, you are going to act as a police officer to make sure there's peace. Don't go around castigating or trying to collect money from anybody in the name of uh, liberation tax. Don't do it. You are not helping. As much as you sit there, you think you are going to collect taxes today, tomorrow you will not be there. If this revolution is not over, you will not be there to enjoy that tax that you are collecting. Let's fight this fight with the knowledge that we are acquiring on a daily basis. Let's emulate what is happening with the Bo Unity Warrior. Let's see how much pain they are putting on the enemy, not the pain they are putting on the population. Don't you make any mistake that you want to go against the population and expect to live in Amazonia. Two, three years down the road, you will be expecting your own brother, your own sister, your own parents to enjoy what you fought for. And we are all going to fight to the last man standing. Thank you so much. Let's keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. And we are going to get this in the for the future of our children. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Patrick. And I would like uh, to, to give uh, um, the opportunity to Dr. Ngwambe. Uh, you have one minute to run up, please. Yeah, Tom, Mike, thank you again for inviting me to today's show. I also want to thank um, the producers of uh, ABS TV for hosting today's program and also want to appreciate my brother, uh, Chairman Patrick, and my brother, Nisama Thomas, the we we're having today. To the people of Amazonia and our liberation forces, please continue to work on rebuilding your relationship with one another because this is a people's liberation struggle and the support of the people is essential to the success of this liberation struggle, the same way the the, the, the good behavior and the productivity of the fighters is yeah, essential to the right. success of this liberation yeah, struggle. I want to go back to this issue. I know one of my brothers just talked about the grand dialogue. You know, my fellow Amazonians, and especially to Nasir Clovis and Julie Franklin, all these tricks that like public de Cameroon is trying to play on us is to keep us from actually getting what we deserve. And what we deserve is a country of our own. That grand national dialogue was just them repackaging something that they were supposed to have already given, but they're now trying to give it to you as us as a gift again. And finally, addressing mm -hmm. someone else's topic about Ahijo and Bia having their hands tied by France. That is a nice excuse, but we've seen our brothers in Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and recently Senegal stand up mm -hmm. and get that mm -hmm. France monkey mm -hmm. off their back and actually fight yep. for a more accountable system for the society. So no African leader can be using France, even though they, they do manipulate, don't get me wrong, but you have an opportunity to stand up against France yep. now in this world. So that's no longer an excuse. My fellow Ambazonians, yep. God bless you. We are on track. Take care. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Mbambe, Chairman Patrick, for coming on again today. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. And, and the, the one message I have for our brave, fight, for our brave fighters is this. Um, look, if you are on ground zero, um, and you took up um, uh, tools and sticks, whatever, to defend yourself and your people from the aggression of La Republic of Cameroon when they started breaking into doors, uh, shooting others and killing, shooting others in the legs, maiming and burning and doing all that. If you are not focused on that and you are now targeting the very people that 
you took up arms to protect, then you have lost your way. And remember this, it is you who is on the ground. Efan was deceived into doing this, and he is now gone. If you go out and someone is sitting far away and sending you to go out and molest your own people and you are listening, you are putting yourself at risk of being hurt, of being eliminated, of, of being disgraced. You are not being smart by listening to these people who are giving you this bad advice because at the end of the day, it's, it's you who will suffer. It is you who will lose your life for no good reason. It is better to lose your life doing something great, something of honor, something that your family can be proud of you for, than going out to hurt people where when you die, people will look at you as your, your, your dead body as if you are a dog. Look at the way Efang's body was exposed to the elements for about six days. It's a disgrace. And the people rejoiced when he fell. That is not what you want as a restoration fighter. You don't want people to be happy when you are dead. That is not good. For, so for those of you who have been doing the wrong thing, I'm advising you to change your ways. If someone is advising you to go out there and collect liberation tax and send to them, even if you are keeping some of it, if you die tomorrow, if I died keeping so much money, how has that helped him? Do not listen to these people. They do not have your interest at heart. If they had their, your interest at heart, they would tell you to do the right thing. But if they are telling you to do the wrong thing, they don't care about you. Do not do it. And for the, to the population, for these people who come around harassing you, come up with a mechanism of exposing them and eliminating them. That is what they deserve. I say it. Expose them and eliminate, eliminate them. A, a, a liberation tax is not... It's not legal in Ambazonia. There's no mechanism that has been established to make sure that it is fairly done. Therefore, it is illegal, it is carried out by criminals, and they should be treated as such. That's the message I have for you. And lastly, again, I want to recognize the Bafu 7 Qatar for listening to the voices of the people and calling off the lockdown that, that was earlier announced. That is the way to go. Let us continue doing the right thing for our people. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for tuning in today and uh, uh, continue to take good care of yourselves and, your, and, and, and the people that you pledge to serve. With that, uh, the war zone is out. Good night.